to Skipper T here. Today we're going to check out the, I guess the backyard apocalyptic washing machine, for lack of a better term. What I've done is I've gotten two buckets, picked them up at Lowe's, five gallon buckets, and one of them I took and drilled, so you can see this, a bunch of holes in the side of it, and it's quite a few in the bottom. The other bucket I've left whole so that this one then will slide down inside of this one. Now this has got about three gallons of water in the bottom one. Up on this, I took your basic plunger. I drilled several holes into the top of it. I cut out the bottom in kind of a pattern here to help as an agitator for your clothes. I put a PVC coupling in here that happens to fit right over the handle. What will happen then, is you put the lid over the bowl, or over the, the pail rather, you'll be able to go in a motion like this and twist it around whatever and it should work as an agitator. The holes in the bottom of this are designed to allow the suds and everything to come up through um, and the water to come up through and that's what's going to create kind of a pressure washing type scenario for the washing machine. Today we're just going to do a pair of shorts and a shirt and we'll see how it works. Again, I've got three gallons, roughly three gallons of water in this pail here. I am going to use, and I mean just very little soap in there. And all I'm going to do is just rinse the cup out inside here because obviously the more soap that we use, the harder it's going to be for that to rinse out after the fact. So we'll just drop it in, we'll get them going, get them wet here, make sure they're down in there, the plunger, we'll put the lid on it, kind of hold it down, and now this is going to be able to go back and forth, spin the handle, and it's going to work as, as pretty much like your machine inside, only this one's powered by the Armstrong theory versus electricity. Now I'll tell you what, I'll bring the camera in, we'll pull the lid back a little bit so that you guys can see what's going on inside. Stay with me. Alright, now we've got the lid off the top so that you can kind of see that. Um, that's on pretty tight to come up over the top of these three knobs here. It's easier if you take the bottom off and then run the handle up through. But as you can see, that is definitely going to work as an agitator. And then if I twist it around, twist the handle around, it works just like the one in your washing machine in your house. And how long it's going to take to clean these clothes, I really have no idea. Um, but it does appear to be working pretty good. You know, the water's coming up through the spout like I thought it would. If we just take these out for a second. Conserve water. You can see that creates, you can see it pushing up through the holes there. So yeah, technically speaking, I think this theory is sound. All right, I'm gonna do this for a few minutes and then we'll be back. All right guys, several minutes later, definitely the water has changed um, color. It appears as though we might have gotten at least most of the dirt out of the clothes. They're certainly cleaner than they were previously. That much I'm pretty confident in. So what I'm going to do, and I've got a tub over here with some fresh water in it, so I'll show that in a second. Get these out, kind of wring them out by hand here a little bit. You can definitely feel the soap that's in there. I'm glad I didn't use a whole lot of it. Okay guys, now we've got the clothes in the rinse tub. And that's just going to be a very simple process. Rinse them out, squeeze out the water as much as you can. Um, now we've got two options here, um, and we're going to try them both. 
just for the sake of argument. But I'm going to take my bucket. I'm going to rinse out the soapy water just by a quick immersion in here. Simple enough. Now again, we're going to get these clothes out. We'll take out as much water as we possibly can without twisting them and introducing a whole bunch of wrinkles or anything into it. I'm going to throw it into the bucket over here. I'm going to do the same thing with my shirt here. And again, we're just going to take out some of this. Now, I don't know. I'm going to attempt what's called a spin cycle on this. May or may not work worth a hoot. Who knows for sure? But we're going to give it a try. At this point on a warm day, hanging them up on a clothesline, yep, they're going to dry. No problem. A little bit of a breeze. It's going to go pretty quick. But let me show you what the spin cycle, using the same thing as the agitator bucket, um, looks like. So stay with me. Okay, guys, as you've seen in my previous videos, I keep a 25-foot cord with a big metal ring, stainless steel ring tied around it, and I keep four of these in my backpack. Now what I've done was I took, and the reason I do that is the weight of this will fly up over the tree, and then I can catch it, and now I've got both ends, okay? And it's sawed up over a tree branch about eight feet above my head so that we can come down in this fashion. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the bucket, tie it off somewhere here right in the center. Any simple knot that will hold it will do. Um, I might just put a little flip hitch in here right quick, a little bit extra, pull it one more time back through just to ensure that it doesn't come loose. Now what I can do is twist this bucket around, twist it around, now obviously the longer your cord the more twisting that you're going to have to do on this, and what I'll do is I'll hold off for a minute, I'll get this thing twisted up, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. Alright guys, hope you can hear me over the neighbor's lawnmower. What I've done now is just twisted this bucket around and twisted the line that it was connected to. And you know, you can take it up as high as you want, you can twist it as hard as you want. I'm just now getting to the point where there could be some overlays in the, in the line. But then all I've got to do is let go. Now this might work a little bit, actually I'm getting some sprinkles. This might work a little bit better with a full load in there. But honestly, I can feel the water sprinkling out of the bottom of this thing. So this is the spin cycle on the apocalyptic backyard clothes washing machine. So you can do that. It's going to come down. It's going to hit the end. It's going to continue. It's going to spin back around. It's going to start to climb back up ever so slightly. You might be able to see that in relation to the, the fence in the back. Hopefully it'll start in that direction. And if not, well, that's okay too. You can always spin this. You can just, you know, crank it up. Like I said, it may work better with, you know, a few more garments in there. I'm only using two. I would say the capacity on this is going to be probably two to three lightweight shirts and maybe a maximum one pair of jeans. If you're wearing shorts, probably two shorts, two or three shirts. Um, again, it all depends on, you know, how much water level you've got and how much water you have available while you're doing the plunging and the cleaning of the clothing. So again, this is done pretty good here. I can just spin it back up if I want to run it a second time. At this point, you can actually see where it spun the moisture to the edge of the clothes. And what was on the inside is actually, I won't call it fairly dry, but it's not collecting the moisture as it did on the outside portion. So at this point, I think what I'll do is we'll move over to the paracord clothesline. I might just take the rest of the moisture out here. Really, that didn't work too bad. I mean, yeah, there's still a lot of water in there, but still, nice warm summer day or even a cold day with the breeze blowing, you know, this is gonna dry out fairly quickly. Okay, guys, I just tied a simple overhand knot um, loop on the end of the line, just a real simple slip knot type thing. Wrapped it around the tree. I've got a few clothes pins out here all ready to go and I took around did a basic little slip knot trucker's hitch right here tied it off super simply around the fence post and now we'll just come back over here and 
we'll get our clothing and we'll see if we can get that into the frame here and we'll hang up some clothes all right youtube a couple of things you can do you can just lay them over the top of the line like this real simple if the wind's not too strong obviously nothing's going to take off you can throw a clothes pin on them to secure them much like we're doing here Hopefully that'll just dry out. Pull your pockets out. That'll help dry it out and keep pulls the material from taking off. This shirt's a little heavier. It's not as quite the same material as the shorts. We'll wring out the rest of the water in this one. We'll bring it back up. We'll find the shoulder. We'll loop it over a little bit find out if these clothes pins are solid enough to hang on to it the way it stands. Again, we'll just come back over to the other side. Might put it down a little bit more. Alright guys, so now the laundry is done. It's hanging out to dry. Now we got to go chop some wood, maybe do a little trapping, do a little hunting, procure our food. Of course, I, that just means walking inside today, but you know, if you were out in the out in the wild and this is the way you had to do things now you're done that didn't take me but 15 minutes 20 minutes at the most and from there you know we're we're ready to go laundry's done clean clothes wonderful thing anyway guys thanks for watching remember keep your eyes open keep your heads up and we'll see you outside